In this video, we're looking at feeder taps. Now, is this just some random code section or is there a logical way to get there? We know that 240.4 is about conductor protection. It tells us there that these conductors need to be protected according to their ampacities found in Article 310 unless allowed in A through G. And it's there that we bump into E, which is entitled tap conductors. List several things, branch circuits and feeders, but we're going to look at one of the references there, 240.21, entitled location in circuit. But what does that mean? Well, Article 240 is about overcurrent protection. So this section is wondering where in the circuit should the overcurrent protection be? And it tells us it should be at the beginning of the circuit where the conductors get their power unless allowed in A through H. And that's where we bump into B here, feeder taps. And we're going to find as we finish this drawing out why they're feeders as opposed to branch circuits. But that brings up the concept of terminology. So it also helps if we understand overcurrents, the difference between overloads and short circuits. Now I have another video on those four, but quick reminder, the overload flows in the proper pathway. It's just that the amps exceed the rating. Whereas a short circuit flows in the wrong pathway. It's taken a shortcut. And also the current on a short circuit generally greatly exceeds the ratings. So there's normally a much higher current on a short circuit than an overload. Generally, we'll see how that plays into the protection here. So which of these conductors would be tap conductors? I've got a 300 amp breaker feeding a wire that's good to 310 amps. That's good. Another wire spliced in here, also good to 310. That's good, well protected. But when I get here, you could get three times the ampacity of a number three before this breaker even starts thinking of opening. And that's exactly what the definition of a tap conductor is. In 240.2, it says any conductor where the breaker ahead of it is too big for the ampacity of the wire. Too big even for the roundup rule. You could employ the roundup rule here or here and even go down to a 300 or a 250 KC mill and be legal with the roundup rule. This is too big of a difference. Now I have a video on the, uh, the roundup rule if you're interested, but I also put it in here because this subsection here specifically says that you cannot use the roundup rule for tap conductors. The reason is the roundup rule allows you to take a, a lower ampacity conductor if you want and protect it with the next bigger size overcurrent device. But here we're skipping all kinds of sizes. This is too much of a difference, a bigger difference. And when does it become too small of a wire for this? The other thing I should add is I'm using ampacities from the 75 degree copper column. And with my number 10s and smaller, I'm using my small conductor ampacities as restricted in 240.4D, as in Dave. Here I've drawn a fuse disconnect, or you can have a circuit breaker in there too. And that matches the ampacity of this wire. So let's think of this concept. Could I use this device, even though it's at the tail end of the wire, the wrong end from our basic rule, could I use this device to provide overload protection for this wire? And could I use this device to provide short circuit protection? Because after all, the wires coming out of this disconnect are protected at 100 amps. They're fine, no restrictions here. And this wire here is protected by this breaker. It's only this section I'm concerned with. So let's look at these concepts. Overload says it's flowing in the proper pathway. It's just an excess of amperage. So if it's flowing in the proper pathway, it's going to come down here through the load. And I either have too many loads connected 
or I have a certain load that is laboring somehow, it's drawing more current for some reason, and then it goes back this way. But if it's going in the proper pathway and it's too many loads or the load is causing the problem, will this device trip? Yes, proper pathway. So if this device opens, will any current flow here? No, because the current only will want to come here, but open circuit, can't go anywhere. So that would protect from overloads. But remember the short circuit, it's a wrong pathway. If we have some damage here, let's say someone saws through this conduit, is that going to cause a lot of amps to flow? Yeah, that's going to cause probably thousands, many thousands of amps to flow. And will that trip this breaker? Yes. So what we do with tap conductors is we use the device ahead of it to provide the short circuit protection and the device after it to provide the overload protection. And it's all based on these characteristics of these concepts. So if I can do that here, could I do it on the 30 amp as well? Yes, I believe I can. It would work in the same concept using the overload and short circuit concepts. Now, when I get to these rules, I go to B1 and it tells me that this wire here, the tap conductor, needs to have an ampacity great enough for the load that's connected. And it also needs, it's a rule in there, that it needs to land in an overcurrent device, a fuse or circuit breaker, that adequately protects it, that is sized correctly for the tap conductor. So that we're doing in both of these cases. Now, it's here where we have the difference. B1 says I can actually go as low as one-tenth of the ampacity of the breaker ahead of it. One-tenth of that ampacity, up to 10 feet. The other requirements in there are that this conductor needs to be in a raceway. And over here, because this one is at least one third the size of the breaker ahead of it, I can take this one up to 25 feet. And it also has the same list of rules as we mentioned, except here, it says it needs to be in an approved raceway or other approved means. What does approved mean? Well, we go back to definitions and it means it's okay with the AHJ. The inspector has to approve it. So you're gonna employ this, make sure it's a raceway that your inspector will approve of or some other method that will be approved, it allows. But the inspector has to give it the thumbs up. Over here now, why did I leave that blank? I can go up to 10 feet if this is at least one tenth of this amount. I can go up to 25 feet if this conductor's ampacity is at least one third of this amount. But I have nothing for less than a tenth. So what would I do here? Even if I want to put this in a 15 amp breaker, I can't go this small. If my minimum is one tenth, what would an option be? If all I need is a 15 amp circuit, this part is fine. It's just the tap conductor needs to be upsized so its ampacity is at least one tenth of the upstream device. Now what if I want to take these smaller ones and run them longer than 10 feet? Well, then I would have to use the 25 foot rule and upsize this to at least a number three. And after this device, I could drop them back down again. And while I'm talking length, don't get confused into thinking you can put in a 10 foot stick of conduit here. You'd have wires sticking out the top and out the bottom. These lengths deal with the conductor, not the raceway. Final rule I'm going to look at, 240.21, the very first paragraph, the last sentence of that paragraph, essentially tells me I cannot tap a tap. Do you notice these tap conductors are all spliced into a fully rated conductor for the upstream breaker? 
I could also employ the roundup rule for this one here, or I could take these tap conductors and run them directly from the breaker. But I cannot splice into a tap conductor with another tap. Well, as I look at this picture, at the beginning I asked you, would we be able to see that these are feeders? And what's the definition between feeder and branch circuit? Well, a branch circuit is after the last overcurrent device. So if I have an overcurrent device after this conductor, this would still be a feeder. These would be the branch, or they could be feeders. This could be going off to a 100 amp panel somewhere. So here we've looked at B1 and B2. And if you understand the main concepts here, one of them being that the upstream device provides the short circuit protection and the downstream device provides the overload protection. You should have a fighting chance at understanding three, four, and five. Three deals with transformers. As long as the primary and secondary conductors total length is not over 25 feet, you can have a primary conductor that is at least one third of the upstream device. Still has to carry the load of the transformer. And then the secondary conductors, you have to use the transformer ratio to find out the equivalent amperage. Four deals with some manufacturing buildings, ones with walls at least 35 feet high. I can run more than 25 feet with one third of the ampacity, sometimes up to 100 feet. And five deals with outside tap conductors, unlimited in length. Now, each of those has its own particulars, but the main concepts are the same. Thank you.